to fall into a place where we think that the world we live in is the only world that exists, right? So it's like the world that I lived in, that was all I knew, like within the 285 realm of my, I didn't go, even when I was like in the streets getting money and all that, I wasn't like going to Miami for more day weekend. I wasn't going to Vegas, Cancun, even though I probably could have, I just wouldn't because I was just locked into my frame. I was like, okay, we make money around here. We go to the clubs, we do this. And I was trapped into that. It wasn't until I got exposed to network marketing and I started hearing cats like Jim Ron, Les yep. Brown, Tony Robbins, you know, Eric Thomas, these, and these, they were just talking different. I had ne- John Maxwell. Like I had never heard of this type. I'm like personal development. I had never heard this type of stuff. And the principles were, you know, relatively simple, but you yeah. just never heard people break it down like that. And it was so accessible. And so I was like, wow, my mind was blown. I just got obsessed with that stuff. And as I dove deeper, it just unlocked another piece, unlocked another piece. And now it just, you know, opens a whole new world. Came up from the bottom to the top. To the top. Hey. And the young is gonna never stop. Never stop. Hey. And he always punch it in the clock. In the clock. Hey. In the clock. In the clock. Hey. So my background is a little in- more interesting, right? Well, I don't wanna say more interesting than anybody else's, but it's pretty interesting. So I actually, um, so I dropped out of high school. I'm from Atlanta. Um, probably nobody on here from Atlanta. Uh, but I'm from Atlanta. I um, dropped out of high school in 10th grade. So I have a ninth grade education. So I grew up early before that in a drug infested environment. Everybody in my family either sold drugs or did drugs or worked jobs and were poor. Um, and at a young age, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be poor. Um, and I don't want to work jobs all week and still end up being broke. Um, so I ended up selling drugs. So I jumped out in the street, started selling drugs at a young age. I dropped out of high school in 10th grade because algebra one and algebra two just wasn't making sense to me. Um, and I felt like I was making more money than my teachers anyway. So I was like, why am I listening to them? Learn stuff that doesn't make any sense. So I left school, um, started going back and forth to jail. That kind of comes with the territory. Um, and when I was 19, my first son was born while I was in jail on my 19th birthday. I was not, I turned 19 on my birthday. Um, and my first son was born um, and while I was 19. So 19 was a memorable year for me, to say the least. Um, so I said, you know what? I'm going to do this job thing when I get out. And I got to be around my son. My dad wasn't around when I was growing up. I got to be in my kid's life. So I'm going to get out and do this job thing. Jumped out. That lasted mm, all about 90 days, if that. Jumped back in the streets because that's what I knew best. I had developed a skill in that particular area in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so, um, but I took, I took the money I was making in the street, started an entertainment company. Uh, I'm a hip hop guy. So anybody who know, you know, follows hip hop, you know, typically the guys go from the streets, making some money, take that money. Everybody starts, you either start an entertainment label or you rap, right? And I'm not a rapper and I didn't want to rap. I wanted to be the guys who was really making the money. And we all know the people who are making the money are the cats who own the assets. So I started an entertainment company, managing artists, doing club promotions. Fast forward, while hanging in the club one night, a guy walks up to me and pitches me on network marketing. I didn't know what network marketing was. Some of you who aren't who's like, what's network marketing? So it's like that business opportunity with the ground floor opportunity. And people say, hey, all you got to do is get two people and they'll 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 get two people. And before you know it, you're making millions of dollars, sipping pina coladas, you know, traveling the beaches of the world, wearing nice suits, all that. So I'm like, okay, I'm in. So I jumped in, paid 500 to get in. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a bank, none of that. Cause I'm like fresh out of the streets, right? Um, so I'm like, I don't have a car. So they showed me how to get a prepaid car. Got into this network marketing deal, selling video phones and technology. And, um, and I almost quit because everybody was telling me it was a pyramid scheme. It was like, it's a pyramid scheme. It's not going to work. You know, and I didn't know what this was. I'm like, I just thought it was a huge opportunity, which it ended up turning out to be one. So fast forward through that, I kind of plateaued out. I had a little success, you know, nothing to really write home about. But um, I was introduced to internet marketing via that way. So I was introduced to direct response marketing more specifically. So I started learning direct response marketing because even though it's called network marketing, they don't really teach marketing. They just teach you how to go out and talk to your friends and family, how to talk to people who come within three feet of you. And I'm at this point, I'm a massive introvert. I'm still now partially introverted. I'm a recovering introvert. So I'm kind of depends on the environment that I'm in, um, how I am. Or if I'm on stage, I'm more extroverted. But if I'm, if I'm not, I'm just kind of more to myself. But then I'm like, I'm in the streets. Number one, we don't talk to strangers. Number two, we don't bring people to our home. Um, and number three, I'm not going to bring my people to your home because that could end up very bad, especially you guys are talking about making all this money. So I was like, I got to figure out another thing. So that led me into internet marketing. Some out of my team sent me a link to this internet marketing thing. Um, it was actually called, it was a book called Magnetic Sponsoring. 
I read the sales letter like I didn't know it was a sales letter. You know, to me, it's a it's a web page, it's a website. But you know, when you get into this marketing stuff, it's called a sales page. So I'm um, reading this website. I may have read it like 30 or 40 times. Finally bought bought it. It was a $40 ebook. Bought it, read everything to it over and over and over again. And he was like, hey man, you can actually sell this book to other network marketers and teach them how to build a network marketing business. And I'll pay you $20 for every one you sell. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So I did that, made my first $20, $20 online. I was hooked. Uh, now fast forward, I was trying to learn everything. Then I finally, after a few years, after I went broke through all my savings and all that, um, finally decided to pick one thing to focus on. Now I started picking that one thing. People started reaching out to me, asking me what I was doing. Could I coach them? Then I discovered that information marketing is a thing. Like people will pay you for information that you know. Like this is crazy. So then I was like, people are, they, people want you to coach them. And I'm like, coach you? Like then I discovered that coaching is an industry and you can build a build business. It's a hundred, it's hundred million dollar businesses coaching people i'm like this is crazy like i've been in the wrong business my entire life like i thought selling drugs and all that was like making a lot of money the music industry a lot of money like you can sit at home on a freaking laptop and like upload videos and people to pay you for this is insane so went to the coaching route we grew our coaching business to like six figures people started reaching out asking what were we doing they wanted us to teach them so i started a little coaching business started charging 300 dollars a month people was like paying i'll have a membership for 97 dollars a month then we started saying hmm we see if I can charge 300 a month for coaching and people start paying it. So we got the 10,000 a month with that. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. What if I charge $500 a month? People start paying that. I'm like, this is crazy. So then we learned the whole high ticket model and people, I had my first high ticket offer was $7,000. I sold that just reading the script. Didn't really know what I was doing. Somebody bought it. I was like, this is crazy. So fast forward, you know, two or three years later, uh, we've grown our company, Client Attraction University. We've helped our clients do over $500 million in revenue. Where I'm from, it's called Half a Billy. So um, yeah, and that's what we do. We help clients that they, mainly coaches, consultants, service providers. Um, if they want to attract more clients that happily pay them $3,000 to $10,000 or more, we help them put those systems in place so they can eliminate the revenue roller coaster and they can actually create true freedom you know, in their businesses. So I guess that's the abridged version without me going too long, but uh, hopefully that kind of gave you some context. Yeah, for sure. It looks like we, uh, we got questions already. What's up, um, I wanted what you got? to ask you what you meant when you said um, you're a recovering introvert. So I was partially joking and, and I said partially. So here's why. So most people, when they see me speaking on stages and videos, they take me as somebody who being super extrovert. And I'm very careful about how I identify myself and the words I use to identify myself. So I just kind of say some stuff playfully. So I don't really, some people say an introvert is like people who don't really talk much or whatever to themselves. Extrovert is somebody who's super open and outgoing. I'm kind of, it depends on the environment. If I'm not like doing business and things of that nature, I'm like super to myself. Like I'm always the quiet guy, I'm more observative than anything. But um, depending on the zone that I'm, obviously I can't come on here and do that, right? But um, if I'm not in this zone, I'm in my office, I can do my own thing. I don't have to be around a ton of people. Actually, when I'm around a ton of people, it can be exhausting for me. Um, and I have to kind of get to myself, read a book, sit in my room just to kind of, you know, refuel. People who know me know I'm not a person. I'm, if we go to an, if you and I were to go to a networking event or an event, I wouldn't be the person that's working the room. I'll find one person who I may meet and we'll probably talk the entire time. But I'm not the guy who's going to be walking through introducing myself to everybody. You said you had done network marketing in the past. Uh, would you ever do network marketing again? Great question. So yes, I've done network marketing in the past. I did like a few different companies. I would never do it again. I think, I don't regret doing it because I think it set me up for everything that I do now, right? And it, it introduced me to personal development and it actually helped me start getting over my fear of public speaking. But I wouldn't, knowing what I know now, I would definitely not do it again because it's, it's not enough money in it for all the work you got to put out. So you yeah. mentioned you grew up in a household with drugs and all that stuff. And I think you may have slid something in there that you kind of fell into something at some point too. Um, I'm going to be nine years sober in January. So I've been through some shit and done some shit. What were, and I know a lot of people here probably have, or have been in an environment where they're kind of stuck. What were the things that really got you up and out of that place and that mindset and really kind of like, helped you out and turned you around so you could get on that path and not become like a statistic, the bad kind, but the good kind, like Mike, you know, section eight to great is what I say. 
One hundred percent, man. So for me, mm. it was for me, it was exposure, man. So it was like the world that I lived in, because I think it's easy to fall into a place where we think that the world we live in is the only world that exists, right? So it's like the world that I lived in, that was all I knew, like within the 285 realm of my, I didn't go, even when I was like in the streets getting money and all that, I wasn't like going to Miami for more day weekend. I wasn't going to Vegas, Cancun, even though I probably could have, I just wouldn't, because I was just locked into my frame. I was like, okay, we make money around here. We go to the clubs, we do this. And I was trapped into that. It wasn't until I got exposed to network marketing and I started hearing cats like Jim Ron, Les yep. Brown, Tony Robbins, you know, Eric Thomas. These and they, they were just talking different. I had ne- John Maxwell. Like I had never heard of this type. I'm like personal development. I had never heard this type of stuff. And the principles were, you know, relatively simple. But you yeah. just never heard people break it down like that. And it was so accessible. And so I was like, wow, my mind was blown. I just got obsessed with that stuff. And as I dove deeper. It just unlocked another piece, unlocked another piece. And now it just, you know, opens a whole new world. When I first got introduced to network marketing, one of my mentors used to say, if I make $20,000 in a month, that's a bad month for me. And I used to be like, wow, that seemed like so much money because that was my first exposure to it. But now a couple of years passed, like I totally get what she means, right? So now we got people on our team, we pay that out, you know, every month. So I'm like, okay, that's crazy. But it took me getting exposed to it first to now realizing that, man, it's a whole nother world out here that I totally missed out on. Yeah. And it's funny. Um, I did Herbalife for a while too, back. So that's, I, I started on this path of well, the same way you did kind of, mm-hmm. um, and Jim Ron, that's always like the number one personal development that most of the network marketers like yep. introduce you to. And he always says you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with most. So mm-hmm. it sounds like for you, you got around the right people with the right information yep. and, you know, a little bit of personal development blew your mind and it just accelerated your growth and moved you on to another path. 100%. That's exactly what happened. Awesome, man. And what about you? You know, every, every successful person has their own non-negotiables, right? Like what are the non-negotiables in your life, your morning routine, whatever it is, the things that are part of your day that are non-negotiables that you do no matter what, because they keep you charged and moving in the right direction. So you can take care of you so you can take care of more people. Cause obviously entrepreneurs want to help as many people as possible. So for me, I'm, I'm sticking with my morning routine. I don't do it every day, depending on it. I do it more often than not. Right. Cause every, it's, every day is not perfect, but my goal every morning is to wake up at 345. So I wake up at 345. I, it used to be 4 a.m. I kind of always edged it back. So I started off 5 a.m., right? Then I pushed it to 4.30 and I got to 4. Now I'm at 3.45. So it's like, some people's like, well, 3.45 the reverse is 4. Well, you'd be surprised a 15-minute difference can make a significant difference, right? Just, just in 15 minutes. So I get up at 3.45. Um, I pray at my wife. And then I'm in my office. I got like a 10-second commute to my office. So I get to my office. I hydrate. So I... I, my goal is to drink a gallon of water every day. In a way, what makes it easy for me, these little mason jars, they're like 32 ounces. So if I drink four of these in a day, so I'm already drunk three for the day so far. So I got one more to knock down. That'd be my gallon for the day. So I get in, I hydrate because when you sleep at night, your body is dehydrated by the time you wake up. So yeah. I'm not against coffee and stuff like that, but I, w- I just wouldn't recommend having it first thing in the morning because your body is already dehydrated. And then by you hitting it with coffee, you ought to make it, you just dehydrate your body even more, right? So that's not, you know, no bashing anybody who drink coffee first thing in the morning. That's just something I learned throughout the process. And coffee doesn't sit well with me anyway. So it always, it just, it doesn't it agree with me. Let's just say that. So I hydrate, so I have me some water. I got some herbal, uh, some, some natural herbs that I take, with some, some um, tablets that I take, like um, elderberry, uh, you know, stuff like that just for your immune system. because. Your immune system is very, very important. Of course, we all know that now, especially. So doing that, and then I, um, I typically I work on a project from like 4 a.m. to like 5. So, because I'm super fresh at this point. Yeah. Like you've been asleep, you get up. So let's say you got a presentation to work on, you got some ads to work on, um, or whatever, you immediately jump into that. Some people magic jump into hour. Like, that magic hour, exactly. So some people jump into meditation and all that. And that's great. I get into that. But while I'm fresh, I like to jump into some kind of project. So I get into that and I do that to like 4.45 or 5. Then at 5, I work out. So um, I used to go to the gym and all that. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, 
It take it used to take me like 30 minutes to get my truck to, to my trainer, 20 minutes to get to my trainer. I work out with him for an hour. Then I got to drive back to my crib for about two hours. So that's about two hours. I mean, about 20 minutes. So that's like two hours gone, right? But I can get a 30 minute workout here, just as impactful. I saved an hour and a half. So I get my workout done. Right after my workout, I do um, my meditation. I have a 10 minute guided meditation that I do. So I do that. And then from there, I do, I have this, it's kind of weird, but I have this thing called the morning stack. And basically what the moment show y'all, basically what the morning stack is, this is what it is. It's kind of weird, y'all. Don't, don't judge me. It's kind of nerdy. So that's my morning stack. So basically what the morning stack is, these are, because while I'm working out, by the way, I'm listening to an audio book and I listen to audio books at two times the speed. So I'm working out my brain and I'm working out my body at the same time, right? Then I, when I do my morning stack, these are just like different devotionals. Um, so one of them is um, called Jesus Calling. One of them called um, My Good, to, My God Today, 365 Devotions for people who might be a little ratchet, but God knows your heart. And then I got um, a Miles Monroe devotional. And then I have the Daily Stoic. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's a really good one. And then I have the Daily Drucker, if y'all are familiar with Peter Drucker. Um, so I have one by him. And, and they're like, and all of these, it seems like a lot, but they're really like one or two pages a piece, right? So I get yeah. those in about 10 to 15 minutes um, and then boom. So I'm done with that. Then I journal. So I journal. I have a few prompts. So my prompts is uh, what are the three things I'm grateful for? Uh, what what would make today great? Uh, what's a daily affirmation? And then what's my morning reflection? So I get my daily stack done in about 10 minutes. My journaling is done in about 10 minutes. Um, and then I got a little goals document on Evernote. It's like a vision board and my goals. I read through all that. It may take about 15 minutes. By that time, uh, it's 6 a.m. And at 6 a.m., I wake my kids up. So I wake my kids up, you know, get them to brush their teeth, wash their face. And I'm, I'm, and I'm totally at peace at this point. I'm, I'm like zen out. I can run through a wall. So, so when I'm getting them up and they're like, oh, man, they're whining. and oh, I don't want to go to school today. You know, I'm not responding because I'm already like have poured into yeah. myself. So I'm like, no, nah, state. Get- yeah, I'm in a great mental state, right? So I'm cool with it. I'm not tripping, you know, versus me just getting up at six with them. I'm just as tired. Get up, you know, get up out of the bed. Ah, now nah, their day is gone bad. My day is gone bad. So I get them up. They brush their teeth, wash their face. I'm brushing my teeth with them. They do that. You know, they get dressed. We, I do affirmations with them. Get them the elderberry or whatever. And I walk them to the bus stop. Once they get on the bus, now I've been running. So once they get on the bus, I'll run for 30 minutes. Um... So I get like, you know, maybe two and a half miles in, 30 minutes. I'm not like a marathon run or nothing, but I get me like two, two and some change in, get back, hydrate again, take a shower, get dressed. And then at that point, that's when my business day starts about nine o'clock, 9 a.m. And then, yeah. And I'm like I said, I'm ready to run through a wall at that point. So you're you you you're you're mad plugged in by the time you go to work. Oh, yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. One, and, and I got, and, I'm, and I'm, I haven't, I haven't really, ex- so depending on what's going on, I may have chatted with my CMO through Voxer or something like that, but for the most part, I'm just locked in um, on like pouring into me real heavy. That's awesome, dude. And on your daily stack, you mentioned the daily stoic and then one to two pages. Are they all books that have like one to two pages for each day like yep. that? Yep, exactly. So the daily, the only one that may have two pages is the, um, the Miles Monroe one. So sometimes nice. it's one page, sometimes it's two, but the other one is literally just, one page so like even like the daily stoic is literally like that's like yeah. an excerpt from the daily stoic you know what i'm saying yeah me and my chick actually got that book together not that long ago when we were reading it together and doing it together it was cool yeah yeah it's really it's really cool do you switch up the stack or is it those are the same books you go to like go to all time for the most part i keep those and i may add another book so for example so this is my daily stack and then i'll have a physical book that i'm reading right so for example the physical book i had in there is called seven laws you must honor to have uncommon success. It's a super short read. So that'll be the physical book that I have in the stack. I had breakthrough advertising in it. So I got to go back to breakthrough advertising. And many times if I'm listening to an audio and it's really good, I'll order the physical version as well. Let me ask you this. So your young self, network marketing, personal development, the five people you surround yourself with, like level yourself up. That was a big thing for you. What was another thing that at this point in your life, knowing what you know now, you may have told your younger self as wisdom or some kind of coaching advice or whatever. Like what's something that you know now besides like that, that you wish you knew back then? The amount of money you make 
is a direct correlation to the amount of value that you provide to the marketplace. The amount of money you make is a direct correlation to the amount of money that you want to you provide to the marketplace. And how do you provide value? You provide value by solving a problem, right? So most of the times we think, and I got this from Jim Rohn, right? So Jim yeah. Rohn stated that most people think that they get paid $15 an hour. You actually don't get paid $15 for the hour. You get paid $15 for the value you bring to the hour. Yeah. So how can you, this is what I was saying to my younger self, how can you become a hundred times more valuable to that hour? How can you become a thousand times more valuable to that hour? So now when somebody says, okay, I charge 20,000, I mean, $20,000, 2000 an hour, 5,000 an hour, 10,000 an hour, 20,000 an hour, 50,000 an hour, you're like, okay, great. Because they know they bring 50,000 of value to the hour. And most people can't fathom that because they think you get paid based on the hour. So that would be the biggest thing. You want to make more money, you become more valuable. How do you become more valuable? You develop skill sets like plugging into programs like this. Love that. Yeah. Masterminds. How many masterminds have you been in? Oh my goodness. Um, I lost count, man. Yeah. Let me, say, let me show you something crazy. So I'm heavy on education. So this is my bookshelf. That's, Love one, that's that. one of my bookshelves. I got an entirely different bookshelf on that side. The number one investment is books, advertising, and coaches, mentorships, masterminds. So I'm heavy. In, I'm, right. I'm probably in like three different masterminds now. Yeah. I mean, I, most people would believe this is as to be true as a, like a business owner, entrepreneur, there's nothing better you can do than invest in yourself and know how to sell and market a product. If you can do that, okay. you can make money anywhere, anytime in any economy. Exactly. And you know, that's what we do. We run a closure Academy. We teach these guys our five step sales process and how to close. And I tell them all the time, I said, it's the highest paid profession in the entire world. If you're good at it. And it's the only job where you can go and make more money than the owner and the, than the company owner you know. of the company. The general question is what kind of books would you rec recommend? And in the two aspects, one being, for people who are just like transitioning out of, you know, uh, I come from a similar background where the neighborhood I come from, everyone, oh, the, the story I tell is that everyone grew up on the porch and they're still on the porch today. And I didn't want to be like that. So um, what books would you recommend for people who are starting out and changing their mentality? And then like, what kind of stuff do you lean towards today now that you've established business and you're more successful like what mentality do you look to accomplish from that perspective the top three books i always recommend and my number one most gifted book like i literally send this to all of our clients is called the war of art is the war of art by stephen pressfield so that's number one that's number one um, number two is outwitting the devil it's by no it's by napoleon hill outwitting. oh yeah so this is actually um so this was like one of his unreleased ones that came out i think after he died or something like that so it's out with the devil really really good um the audio is probably really good to listen to so that's really that's really number two and um and then number three is psycho cybernetics psycho cybernetics psych psycho cybernetics is about is by maxwell Marx. it's like a it's a it's probably from like the 80s if i'm not mistaken but i'm um, really good so if there was three if there were only three that i would recommend it would be those three. Second part of your question, I'm still heavy because a lot of times it's, it's always funny to me when I hear people say, well, you know, I don't need the mindset stuff, man. Just tell me what to say or just tell me what marketing <laughs> to use or just, just tell me. Like the marketing stuff, I mean, the mindset stuff never gets on. Like I don't care if you're making seven figures a day, you still got to be getting the mindset stuff, like brushing your teeth, like you do it every day. You know yep. what I'm saying? So you get the mindset. So I'm still heavy on the mindset stuff. So like I showed you with the daily stack, I, st I got Jim. We talked about Jim Rohn earlier. I got Jim Rohn ultimate library in my aud audible book, right? I got, a cr I got a crazy amount of books in my audible. So I'm listening to this, the mindset stuff. I also, um, I'm also like, cause I, I got our team. We have like 30 something people on our team, right? So I'm a leader of a team and a leader of a team of teams. So I'm, I'm always like leveling up my C my CEO level, um, thinking strategic thinking things of that nature so I'm, i read stuff like document not like um biographies like you know i just finished up i did steve jobs biography i did um the guy robert auger's biography who, he was the guy who was the ceo of disney um, so i did his um i forget who the guy who did netflix mark randolph he just did one so i i read that one um i also do stuff like i read um the letter i read jeff bezos not I haven't read all of them yet but jeff bezos's um letters to shareholders 
Um, and then I also just pulled up um, Warren Buffett's letters to shareholders as well, because it's, it's a, really about the mentality, like seeing how these things guys think, how these guys operate, how they view things. So really tapping into that so I can continue to just, you know, up level my thinking as well. Because as a CEO, growing and leading a company, right? And then even as a leader, as a salesperson, like you're a leader as well, because you're having leadership level conversations with potential prospects and they're trusting you to like lead them to make the best decision for themselves, right? So it's like in that, you like developing your leadership and thinking on a higher level. So I'm um, really sharpening my saw when it comes to that, you know. Yeah, that's well. What do you think is the most important skill that you developed along your journey to help with your success or the most important skill that you already had? I think the most important, one of the most important skills is mental toughness. Mental toughness is everything. It helps you get through all the necessary challenges. So for example, when I got into network marketing, people were terrified of people to tell them no. And I was like, so y'all telling me that the worst thing that can happen is somebody tell you no and we can make millions of dollars? Like, we don't gotta carry a gun. You don't gotta worry about getting in the shootout. You don't gotta worry about going to jail. Like none of that. The worst thing that can tell, happen is somebody tell you no. And it was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm about to kill this. So I think that mentality, was powerful and then once you got that and then you learn how to market and attract people to you and then you know how to have quality conversations with people and then like help and lead them to making the best decisions for them i.e sales with that combination i mean you're you're unstoppable what negative experiences and positive experiences have to cultivate you into the person that you are now and also helped uh, helped you with achieving them, either uh, helped you achieve or inspired you to achieve the amount of success that you currently have? So I'm gonna give you, so I'll give you an example. So I think one of the things that was a turning point for me was I had my first son, I was 19. So that began to shift me. So that could be a negative experience and a positive experience, right? Because I was in jail when he was born, right? But he was still little when I came home. The first time I met him, I was like in visitation. So that, that could be viewed negative or positive, right? So, so that, that was a big one. Um, another one later on is um, positive, is being exposed, being in the club that night. I'm literally in the club hanging out, drinking and smoking and all that. And then I get introduced to network marketing and get invited to this event, which is crazy. And then going, to, going through that, and then all the people who I thought was gonna sign up, cause I was like, I just knew all of my friends and everybody hard knew was gonna sign up. Them telling me no is a pyramid scheme and all that. That's kind of negative, but it's also positive as well because it still worked out, right? So then that of course led me to the down a path for developing my skills. So it's kind of like in the world, right? It's this thing called the law of polarity. So the law of polarity says basically that Wherever there's a negative thing, it's always a positive thing, right? So it's like, it has to be the opposite. So it's like a piece of bread, it's two sides of the bread, you know, the dime or penny or something, it's two sides of that, the dollar, same thing, right? So it's like, in your life, you can be having an absolute, it can, you can be living in the best time of your life and the worst time of your life at the same exact time. But what'll happen, whatever one you focus on, that's the one will magnify and it'll totally drown out the other thing, whether you focus on the negative or the positive. So I think a lot of the things that most would have saw as a negative experience in my life was actually a positive experience in my life. Other than like your experience with your son being born and being in jail at the time, is there anything other than that, that like immediately jumps out of the forefront of your mind that at the time when you were going through it, it seemed like a really, really horrible experience, but there was something that you still learned from that that has now been able to have a positive effect on you. Or for maybe sure. it was an experience that was turned into a into a big positive. Yes, yeah, so for sure. So so I want so I'll give you another one. So at one point, um, so I when I was transitioning from the streets to um, this legitimate business owner stuff, I left the streets alone. I like used all the money that I had saved up to like buy courses, buy trainings, and all this different type of stuff. But I wasn't implementing anything. So I because I thought that knowledge was power. So it's like the more knowledge I consume, you know, I was the more successful I was gonna be. I had a stack of notebooks taller than me with just notes, but I wasn't implementing anything. And I literally went through all of my money that I had stacked up. And I actually ended up getting evicted from my apartment. And my wife now, she's my, she's my girlfriend at the time. 
she actually found me an apartment. She was paying all the bills and all that good stuff. And here I am still trying to figure this internet marketing stuff out, right? Um, I wasn't trying to get a job or nothing. So I think that was massive because I like went through a total valley moment, right? Where I had to figure things out. And I'm like at the lowest point in my life, I can't even like pay rent. But that also put me at a point where I had to figure some new skills out and really like sink or swim. I was like, okay, I got to figure this thing out now because you know, it ain't no going back. Question on that. You said you were taking notes, you're absorbing all this knowledge, you're learning all these things stacked up high with the notebooks, but you weren't implementing it. Nope. So you were like that guy that goes to all the courses, listens to all the books, but never does what it says. I was that guy. So that's a huge, that's a huge thing. Yeah. What, what was holding you back in your mind from that? Was it like fear, insecurity, didn't believe in yourself? What was that thing holding you back? And what was that shift that got you to just go forward and be like, bro, I know all this fucking shit. I'm going to go do it now. I think the biggest thing for me was I literally was, pro I literally was like, okay, number one, knowledge is power. That's what I thought, right? But it's actually applied knowledge is power. Number two, yeah. you always in the process of like getting ready to get ready. So like when you come in the internet marketing world, it's so much stuff to learn. It's like you got ads, you got copywriters, you got social media, you got you got SEO, you got content creation, you got all this different stuff. So I'm, here I am trying to learn everything. I'm literally, I literally used to watch a webinar every night, a different type of webinar. And I used to tell myself that I was working. So I used to be like, I used to tell my girl like, hey, I'm working. I got a webinar to watch tonight. Like I'm really telling myself that I'm working because I'm watching the webinar. Because you're busy. The, Cause I'm busy. It's, I'm yeah. not working. Like I tell people now, it's like, you really don't learn anything until you implement. Like just cause you consume some information, you haven't learned anything. So like, for example, this whole hour that I'll be here, or however long I'm here, like nobody's learned anything until you get something and you go implement it. Then you'll be like, okay, I actually did learn something. As you're going through this closer Academy program, like you can consume a ton of information. You can begin the best closing information in the world, but until you go out and get on the phone with a warm body, and use one of these strategies, you actually haven't learned anything about sales, you know, and until you talk to somebody. Yeah. So I didn't really get that. And it wasn't until I started implementing and I was like, wow, that's when I actually learned stuff. And then I was focused on, wow, a lot of people are already learning this stuff. They already know this stuff. A lot of people are teaching this stuff, but I wasn't thinking about all the people. I wasn't thinking about all the people before me, well, below me, not necessarily who don't know what I know, who, got, who I could actually be teaching. So I think that was the biggest thing because I bought a course and the guy who I bought the course from, it came with a coaching call. And he basically was like, look, man, instead of trying to learn everything, just pick one thing. Yeah, hyper-focus. One thing and don't do nothing else. And that thing I chose was content. And he was like, create a piece of content for the next 90 days and just do that. So that's when you know the things really started to happen for me. So when you said that that is the thing, like apply that one thing, like you said it just now, knowledge is power. No, applied knowledge is power. But you said that one thing, content creation, focus on that 90 days. So do you, you knew all this stuff. What was holding you back? Were you overwhelmed? You didn't know where to start? Like you were, you had a fear about it. Like what was the thing you think that was holding you back? I think it was, I think it was a mixture of everything. So I think it was a mixture of me thinking knowledge is power. I think it was a mixture of like some insecurities. Cause at one point I used to be like, um, who's going to listen to me? Like, who's going to listen to this young black guy? Because in my niche that I was coming up in, it was like, nobody looked like me, right? So I was like, who's going to listen to me? The guy with the tattoos and the gold teeth, talk a little fast, got, dropped out of high school in 10th grade, right? got all that going on. And then I got all this information, feel like, feel like I got to get everything perfect before I actually start. And then that one conversation I had when he was like, just pick one thing and just get started. And just because I got started, I feel like that freed a lot of other people as well because it showed them that they can actually, you know, get started as well. So I was going to ask, like, what's a good way to start transitioning? But you could answer it. You, you pretty much just said, just pick one thing and mm -hmm. just kind of do it for the 90 days. Uh, yeah. So, 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 yeah, that, that was pretty much my question. What was your, I guess, motivation or what was the point where you were like, OK, I need to transition now that I know it. Right. Uh, now I'm going to, you know, because I'm sure you feel more comfortable knowing the script instead of just like, oh, I'm just going to go and try to 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 do it without really knowing the steps for it. So, so that was really my question. What kind of motivates you? What was the point where you're like, okay, now so, I need to implement. I actually, but when I started doing high ticket sales, I actually didn't know the script, right? I actually literally read the script I hate line script. by line by line, line by line by line. And today, if I was to ever do, I don't really do calls no more. Um, but 
every time I've ever done a call, I've always used the script. And I've read, I've never tried, I've never focused on learning the script. I've only focused on reading the lines and then following the process. Because when you get too comfortable and think you know it, because enrollment, of course, a lot of it is about syntax. It's not really about when you say it. I mean, of course, y'all know this. Y'all are masters at this stuff. But it's like when, how you say it, in the, in the order you say it, all oh, this good stuff, right? So it's like when I start feeling like, okay, I need to know this by heart. Then at that point, then I do something out of syntax, right? So it's like I literally read the script verb by, and I we tell our enrollment guys, and they start trying to get fancy. Like, no, nah, dude, don't get fancy. Follow the process, and that's all you do. So when I had my first high ticket sale, I literally read the script like line by line by line by line, and the person enrolled. So I never focused on learning, and I think that's one of my strong suits now is like my speed of implementation. Like I do stuff and then learn how to do it. Like I don't learn how, I'm, I'm gonna say it again. I don't want to go over nobody's head. I do stuff and then learn how to do it. I don't learn how to do something and then do it. I do it and then learn. And at my speed of implementation, nobody can compete. So I'm, I'm not hesitant to buy a course or invest in a coach, you know, or buy join a mastermind because I know I'm going to implement. I know I can get one or two things out of here, implement, and it's going to pay for this investment times 10 because I know my, my level of implementation and most people don't have that. So I think if you, if you implement faster, I guarantee out of this program, the people who are the standouts aren't the people who know the most, aren't the people who are the smartest. They're the people who come through this thing and they implement and then they figure out the rest as they're implementing. Guarantee without me even knowing the individuals true. personally, I guarantee that's what the case. It's very true. Yeah, it's crazy you went from like not implementing to like hyper implementing. Hyper implementing, it's crazy. Yeah. When did you come across that moment where you realized if you put your mind to it and you put the effort in, you could do anything that you wanted to achieve? So great question, man. So it's going to sound kind of weird, right? So I've always been the type of person who's like, whenever I like do something, I like, I'm all in. So I only know two like things. I only know, I have two switches. I have an on switch and I have an off switch. I don't have like a, that's why I, I used to smoke a lot of weed, like mm -hmm. growing up, right? So I, when I stopped smoking weed, I stopped smoking weed. I didn't be like, all right, I'm gonna smoke every now and then because I only have an on or off, right? So it's like, if I'm smoking, like I'm smoking, like I'm smoking all the time. Like this is kind of how I am, right? Zero or uh, 100. Yeah, zero to, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. Zero, I'm 100. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just not gonna smoke anymore because when I'm, a, I'm gonna I have a obsessive, addictive personality. That's just kind of how I am. So it's like, I'm either on or I'm off. So even when I was in the streets and I'm selling drugs, my only focus at that point, I want my goal, it's going to sound crazy. My goal, my only goal was to be the biggest drug campaign in the world, in history. And I used to study all the big drug campaigns because I was like, this is what I'm doing, right? When I got into the music industry, I like sunk my teeth into the music industry. I'm like, this is what I'm going to be. I'm going to be the best in the world at this particular thing. When I got into network marketing, I started figuring that out. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to kill this. I'm going to be the best in this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, those guys, Les Brown, you know, Jim Ron, those guys got to be replaced. And they're going to be replaced by the guys who are coming up with us, right? So I got into the internet marketing world. I'm like, oh, I'm going to murder this, right? So anything I decided to get myself into, I always kind of came in full throttle. I was like, I'm either going to be, I'm going to be the best at this particular. I didn't want to come in, just kind of fit in, be average, make a couple bucks here and there. I'm like, no, I'm like all in on this thing, or I'm just not in at all. Love that. I appreciate that, man. Love that. That, uh, that a very, very powerful. The only other thing I want to add to that, Michael, is one thing that I have noticed in myself, um, you know, a lot of people have their own disbeliefs, their own challenges in life. doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done. I think one thing that I, I have learned in myself, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to combat it. When you start succeeding in something, whether it be new or whether it be something you've done for a while, and you come to a point and you hit a roadblock. Now, that roadblock could be just life in general or it could be something that is definitively a roadblock it's stopping you how do you deal with that sense of you have all the success and then all of a sudden nothing works what do you do to get yourself back on the saddle and keep pushing forward that's a great question man so here's the cool thing right every everything works right let me let me explain something is either things are either working for you or they're working on you right so even if it's not working for you the way you think it's working for you, like it's not having the results, it's still working on you because it's making you better. 
So it's building you and making you stronger. So you may say, okay, well, I launched this ad, but I'm not getting the results. I'm having these calls. I've talked to 20 people, but nobody's enrolled, right? It's still working because it's making you better on the call. You get them reps up. You get you got more at bats. You can listen to your calls to see what's going wrong. You can listen to your calls when you weren't making sales and find out what 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 has happened. Or you can start looking at like, dang, what's going on in your personal life? Because a lot of times people don't realize like it could be something that's going on in your personal life that be affecting you on the phone and you don't even realize it, right? So it's like, but it's still making you better even through that process. So everything, all work works. But I think it's about having that shift in perspective and saying, okay all right, even though uh, this isn't happening the way I want it to happen, it's still working on me in some capacity. Does, does that make sense? That nah, makes perfect sense. And then I always remind myself, even when I'm going through a challenge, I always remind myself that at this point, most people quit. So if I mm. just push through this, that still keeps me ahead of most people because at this point, most people quit. Even when I'm running in the morning, running is one of the hardest things you can possibly do. The like worst. Running, I'm telling you, because it's it's mind over matter the entire time. You running and you and you might feel like you're gonna die, but yeah. you're not. It's just your brain telling you that. And you be like, well, you running by yourself. If you just walk a little bit, nobody would ever know. But I'm like, because you're by yourself. But I'm like, I would know. And I can't cheat on myself. So are you still push through your lungs, your breathing ain't right. You know, your legs hurting, your feet hurting, you don't got no water, you 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 got all this going on in your head mentally. But if you push through that, I mean, it's, it's a game changer. So it's more of, so my running is a fitness thing, but it's also a mental fitness thing at the same time. It was literally basically the way I understood what you just said then is, is even when you do come across that hurdle, you come across that challenge, you just keep pushing forward. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether you keep failing, you just keep pushing, you keep pushing and pushing. Eventually you'll come back out on top and move forward. Yep, for sure. Cause like, here's the cool thing. It's like, even, so let's talk about the sales. So it's like, even, even it's, it's this concept called regression to the mean, right? So let's say, for example, if let's say you're up, you're let's say you're you killing it, three three sales in a row, four sales in a row, five sales in a row, and then your next ten sales you don't close anything, right? So even when you up, what I found is that most people start changing stuff when they get back into that dip. So let's say they went five sales in a row, and they they close all five of them, and then the next three they don't close, for whatever reason they start changing stuff when they're in the dip. It's like, if you're gonna change stuff, you change stuff when you're up. If anything, you don't change stuff in the dip. That's gonna keep you in the dip longer, right? But even if you look at how the scale grows and you regress to the mean, as you get better, even your lows are higher than your past lows. So even if you're going to kind of a, a, a dip at one point, right? If you look back at your previous dip, your act, this new dip is actually higher than the previous dip. So you're actually still winning compared to where you were you just not where you want to be, but most people get down on themselves right there instead of continuing to hit it, standing in the right mentality. And then before you know it, the law of average is always going to kick back in your favor. It, 100, it's never a time when the law of averages don't work in your favor. They always do. But how long you stand dip is going to be on you. And if you start changing stuff and all that, because the variable is always going to be you. You showing up, you doing the process, you sticking to the process, trusting the process, and of course, trusting yourself at the same time. How did Jesus Christ fuel your purpose in your life? So great question, man. So, so here's the thing. So when I, I'm going to be totally honest with you, man. So when I was growing up, everybody who was teaching me about Jesus in church were all poor. And I always heard people say, people tried to convince me that it was okay to be poor because Jesus was poor. And that didn't sit well for me because I always wanted to be rich growing up. And they used to be like, well, you'll get your mansion when you get to heaven. I'm like, well, you can't have your mansion now and then get your other one. It's like, it just never made sense to me. So, but I, but I wasn't taking the time to learn for myself. I was just listening to what pastors and what people were saying, right? It, it took me actually going to jail to my brother, Brandon, who was asking me earlier, what are some negative things that happened, but turned out being positive. I actually really started getting into the Bible and learning the Bible for myself when I was in jail. So I, used to, I started going to this Bible study and stuff like that. Wow. And one of the things that I learned was that, because um, I was always onto the money, chasing the money, getting the money and all that. And one of the things yeah. I learned in jail uh, about, you know, in Bob, the Bible and Jesus, it basically said, seek thee first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added, right? So it's like, I didn't necessarily have to seek money. I just seek the kingdom of God and everything will be added. That includes money, right? So everything. Yeah. And money is the lowest form of wealth. 
So everything else is added. And that, of course, that includes money as well. So here's a cool thing. Seek thee first the kingdom of God. And then I read deeper for myself. And because people will make you think that the kingdom of God is somewhere else. You know, God is somewhere else. You got to chase him and you got to find him. You got to go after him. But after you read, you realize that the kingdom of God is where? Inside of you. Right. Mm. So it's like, oh, my God. People have been telling yeah, me my yeah. whole life to seek somewhere and go after somewhere. And God is this person who's sitting on the throne, scratching off every little bad thing I did, ready to condemn me to hell. But it wasn't until I started learning this on my own. It's like, that's not the case. The kingdom of God is inside of me. God lives in me. So if I look internally versus looking externally, everything that I want is inside of me. And that unlocks wealth. That unlocks prosperity. That unlocks great health. That unlocks mental wellness and all that good stuff. But nobody was teaching that stuff. It was only teaching me the little bit of stuff that they heard from somebody else that they heard from somebody else that tied back to slavery. And of course, if you just, if you, if you study slavery at all, the slave masters controlled the slaves by just teaching them the pieces of the Bible that kept them in bondage and slavery. So now our grandparents teach the same thing that the slave master taught their grandparents. So now we're all in bondage oh. <laughs> because we never take the time to learn. Does that make sense? That's, that's crazy. I didn't know that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's the super Jesus gem right there. <laughs> Thank you. Let's bro. go. Absolutely, man. That. Guys, what is up? It's your boy Mike Barron. Thank you for checking out the channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you don't, I'm gonna come through this computer screen and close you up my damn self. Let's go. I'll see you at the top. <laughs>